Welcome everyone to this deep dive. We're brought to you by HIV RNA Test Guide. Your trusted partner for HIV testing. That's right, with a huge network, over 4,500 testing locations all across the United States. Mm -hmm. So if you're here in the U.S. and you're looking for clear, reliable info about HIV testing, the latest breakthroughs, prevention, treatment. You're definitely in the right place. Yeah. Our focus today is, well, pretty sharp. We're diving straight into the most promising HIV clinical trials happening right now in 2025. Okay. We really want to unpack why these trials matter, not just, you know, abstract science, right. but how they could actually change things. Treatment, prevention, how they might impact, well, your life. It does feel like we're on the cusp of something big in HIV research, you mm -hmm. know, here in 2025. Definitely. The progress in gene therapy, mRNA vaccines, that same tech from the COVID shots. Yeah, revolutionary stuff and even CRISPR gene editing tools. Yeah. It all kind of suggests we might be closer than ever. To what we've all been hoping for, a functional cure maybe, Yeah. real long-term prevention. Yeah, exactly. But you know, there's so much research going on, it can be overwhelming. Totally. Hard to know what's really groundbreaking. Right. Which trials have the biggest potential? So that's what we're doing today, cutting through that noise. Highlighting the key ones. So yeah, we'll zero in on specific trials, the teams doing the work. And the science. How do these things actually work? Fascinating stuff. And we'll look at where they stand in 2025 and importantly, how maybe you can stay informed or even potentially get involved. Absolutely. Okay, should we jump in? Let's do it. Where do we start? Okay, let's begin with ADT103T. That's from American Gene Technologies or Adimune. Right, Adimune. And this is gene therapy. Autologous gene therapy specifically. And the goal here is, well, ambitious. It's a functional cure for HIV. Okay, functional cure. Remind us what that means exactly. It means someone living with HIV could potentially stop their daily meds. Wow. And still keep the virus suppressed. No viral rebound. The virus isn't actively replicated. That would be life-changing, just yeah. monumental. So status in 2025, where is AGT-103T at? So the final results from their phase I trial, they've been submitted to the FDA. That's a big step. Huge step. And looking ahead, there's a real possibility, maybe late 2025 for a phase two trial launch. Okay. And why is this one generating so much buzz in the HIV community? I think it's the early signs. Mm -hmm. The data suggests um, potential long-term viral suppression without needing constant RT, the daily pills. Right, which is the current standard. Exactly. Art manages HIV incredibly well, but it doesn't eliminate it. Getting viral control without that daily pill burden, that's a massive quality of life improvement. Makes sense why it's so discussed. Okay, what's next? Another area. Let's shift to vaccines, specifically mm -hmm. mRNA 1644. This is a collaboration between Moderna. Ah, uh, Moderna, the name we all know from COVID. Right, and uh, yeah, IAVI, the International AIDS Vaccine Initiative. Okay, so using that mRNA tech for HIV. Precisely. It's an mRNA-based vaccine leveraging that same platform. The goal here is prevention. Preventing infection in the first place. Yes. Training the immune system to make broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. BNABs, those are like the super antibodies. Kind of, yeah. They're specialized immune proteins that can recognize and neutralize lots of different HIV strains, even as the virus tries to change. That sounds crucial for prevention. Yeah. What's the progress here in 2025? They're analyzing the data from phase I trials right now. Thorough analysis. Okay. And there's some talks and potential for maybe an early stage phase two starting this year. The idea of Moderna's mRNA tech working for HIV. That's really exciting. What would that mean? Big picture. Oh, if it works, it could fundamentally change the game for the epidemic. A widely available HIV vaccine. Exactly. Imagine that. Dramatically fewer new infections, a massive public health win globally. The speed and success we saw with COVID gives real hope here. Definitely one to watch. Yeah. Okay, next up, EBT-101 from Excision Biotherapeutics. This sounds futuristic. CRISPR gene editing. It does sound like science fiction, doesn't it? But it's very real research. So what's the goal with EBT-101? The aim is incredibly ambitious to actually eradicate latent HIV. The hidden virus. The reservoir. That's the one. The virus that hides out dormant in cells, even when someone's on effective treatment. EBT-101 uses CRISPR. The genetic scissors. Exactly, like molecular scissors mm. designed to specifically find the HIV genetic material within our DNA and snip it out. Wow. 
literally cutting the virus out at the root. So where are they with this in 2025? Human trials are underway, phase I trials. They're progressing, but uh, cautiously. Understandable, it's complex tech. Very. So the focus right now is really on long-term safety, first and foremost, and of course, monitoring the effect on viral load in the participants. If this works, I mean, Game Changer barely covers it. We'd be talking a true cure, right? Not just suppression. That's the potential, yes. A successful CRISPR approach like EBT-101 could lead to a sterilizing cure, complete elimination of the virus. That's the ultimate goal everyone's been working towards for decades. Incredible. Okay, let's shift gears slightly. Talk about Isletravir from Merck. Not gene therapy, not a vaccine. Right, Isletravir is a drug, a long-acting antiretroviral. From the goal initially was for both treatment and prevention thinking maybe a weekly or even a monthly pill. That would still be a huge simplification. Absolutely. Making HIV management or prevention much easier. Now, I think I remember hearing there were some safety concerns early on. What's the latest in 2025? You're right, there were. Some early safety signals led to a pause in some trials. Uh -huh. But Merck went back, developed a new formulation of the drug. That reformulated version is now being tested. So it might still come back? There's optimism, yes, hope that Isotravir could re-enter larger trials. It's encouraging. So despite the bump in the road, if it proves safe and effective this time, it could still really help with making treatment and prevention easier. Definitely. A less frequent pill could make a big difference in adherence sticking to the plan. Which is key. Crucial for individual health and preventing transmission. Got it. Okay, another long-acting option, Gilead's Linacapavir. This one's an injectable, right, for prevention. That's correct. Linacapavir in this long-acting injectable form is specifically for pre-TAP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's a pre-P for HIV negative people to reduce risk. Exactly. And the idea here is an injection only once every six months. Just twice a year. For pre-P, that sounds amazing for accessibility. Where is that in 2025? It's in late stage trials right now, and Gilead is expecting to submit it for FDA approval by the end of this year, 2025. Wow, that's close. Very promising. Why is a twice a year shot such a big step for pre-access and adherence? Well, it would be the very first twice a year injectable for pre-P. Think about the barriers with daily pills. Remembering every single day. Right. For many people, a shot every six months could be much easier, more convenient, more appealing. That could lead to more people using pre effectively, which means fewer new HIV infections. It's a major potential step forward. Definitely. Now, it's also useful to talk about research that maybe didn't hit the mark initially, isn't it? Like the mosaic vaccine from Janssen J&J. &J. It was stopped, but surely we learned things. Oh, absolutely. That's a critical part of science. You learn just as much, sometimes more, from trials that don't meet their main goal. So the Mosaic trial didn't prevent HIV? No, unfortunately not as hoped, but it gave researchers really important insights. Like what? What was the big takeaway? The key learning was that even if a vaccine gets the body to produce a strong immune response, which Mosaic did, that doesn't automatically mean protection against HIV. Ah, okay. So a strong response isn't the whole story. Not necessarily, no. It really highlighted how tricky HIV is, how variable. It pushed the field towards more... Uh, personalized or tailored vaccine strategies, it showed the complexity of the challenge. Makes sense. So beyond these big ones, are there other notable trials happening in 2025 we could quickly mention? Yeah, there's quite a bit more going on, lots of different angles. Okay, uh, Imchek Therapeutics. They're working on boosting the body's own T cells to fight HIV better. Okay, immune therapy. Right. And Scripps Research, working with the NIH, they're still doing important work on broadly neutralizing antibodies BNABs again, trying different ways to get the body to make them or even delivering them directly. Mm. Then there's ongoing research into doxycycline PE using an antibiotic after potential exposure to prevent not just HIV, but other STIs too. Interesting, combining prevention. Yeah, and folks like Bavarian Nordic and Geovax are looking at totally new ways to actually deliver HIV vaccines into the body, maybe make them work better. So lots of different strategies being tested. That's good to hear. Now for our listeners, maybe across the US thinking about this, where these trials usually happen? A lot of the big trials are run out of major medical centers, research institutions, mm -hmm. often in cities with a significant HIV impact. Like San Francisco, Atlanta. Exactly. San Francisco, Atlanta, New York, LA, Chicago are common hubs. But trial sites can be in many other places too. It's not just the biggest cities. Right. And practically speaking, if someone was interested in participating, is there help with things like travel 
or compensation? It really varies by trial, you know, depending on the funding and the setup. But yes, often there is support. Help with travel costs, compensation for time and effort. It's common. How can people find out more? The best central place is clinicaltrials.gov. It lists pretty much all the studies, public and private. You can search by condition, location. Clinicaltrials.gov, good resource. Definitely. And always, always talk to your own doctor or healthcare provider about your interests. They can offer guidance. That's great advice. Yeah. So why do people decide to join these trials? What are the main reasons? Several key things. One big one is getting access to potentially cutting edge treatments, things not available otherwise. Right, getting early access. Yeah. Plus, you get really close medical attention, lots of monitoring by the research team. That's a benefit too. And for many, it's about contributing, helping science move forward, you know, helping find answers for everyone affected by HIV now and in the future. Altruism plays a big role. Makes sense. And what about qualifying? It's not just anyone can sign up, right? There are criteria. No, absolutely not. Mm. Each trial has very specific rules eligibility criteria. Right. They need to be sure participants are safe and that the research results are scientifically sound. Yeah. So criteria might include whether you're HIV positive or negative. Depends on the trial, yeah. Right. Your age, overall health, maybe your viral load or CD4 count if you're living with HIV, your treatment history, each study is different. Very specific inclusion and exclusion criteria. Exactly. So looking out a bit further, beyond 2025, based on all this current work, what might we see coming down the pike? What are the next steps? Well, given the momentum, mm -hmm. we could see AGT 103T starting phase two, maybe later this year, like we said, yep. excision biotherapeutics with CRISPR. They'll likely keep refining it, maybe next generation versions, even more precise or targeting different parts of that latent reservoir. Constantly improving. That's the goal. We'll probably see new mRNA vaccine trials too, maybe designed for specific HIV subtypes that are common in different regions. Tailoring the approach. Yes. And importantly, we're seeing more and more collaboration. Companies, universities, government agencies working together. That really helps speed things up. That's great. So stepping back again, the big picture. Mm. What does all this mean for the future of HIV? I think it really signifies a fundamental shift. We're moving, we're trying to move mm -hmm. from just managing HIV as a chronic illness. Which was a huge achievement in itself. Absolutely. But moving beyond that towards a future where a functional cure or even highly effective vaccine-based prevention are real possibilities we can actually talk about. Wow. These 2025 trials, they're not just theories, they're tangible steps. They're already impacting the lives of participants and they hold enormous promise for global health. It really drives home how important it is to stay informed, doesn't it? To understand these advancements. Definitely. The more you know, the better conversations you can have with your doctor, the better decisions you can make for yourself, for your community. Knowledge is power, especially in health. Couldn't agree more. Okay, so let's quickly recap the excitement. Gene therapy aiming for a functional cure. mRNA vaccines potentially revolutionizing prevention. CRISPR trying to actually eradicate the virus. And long-acting meds making treatment and pre-P much, much simpler. It really is a dynamic and honestly hopeful time in HIV research. It truly is. And just a reminder for our listeners in the U.S. looking for testing quick, affordable, confidential options are available. Check out our sponsor, HIVRNATestGuide.com, to find a lab near you. They have over 4,500 locations. Thanks again for joining us for this deep dive into the 2025 HIV clinical trial landscape brought to you by the HIV RNA test guide platform. Yeah, thank you. And if you found this useful, please do give us a like, subscribe to the channel, maybe hit that notification bell so you catch our future updates. And we'll leave you with a final thought to chew on. Think about the incredible impact just one of these successful trials could have on global health, on millions of lives. Mm -hmm. What role do you think advancements like these will play in reshaping how we understand, how we manage viral diseases overall in the future? That's a big question. It is. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments which trial are you most excited about.